All right, guys, welcome back to the bench. So today we're going to talk about the Brownells BRN 180. We're going to go through the accuracy testing and some pros and cons that I have of this gun. So uh, let's go ahead and just get this out of the way. A uh, huge shout out to Brownells. They are an amazing company. Roy of Brownells did send this out to review. So go ahead on over there. Show them some love if you definitely want it. If you're definitely checking out one of the BRN 180s, um, they're very nice. They're extremely affordable and probably one of the best parts about the AR-15 platform as a whole. If you're interested in a BRN-180, I highly suggest you go ahead and take a look. Uh, we're kind of going the opposite end of the LMT that we did last week. So this is a more affordable around $700 upper receiver. Kind of comes with everything you need, bolt carrier group, charging handle. Uh, technically the bolt and carrier are one piece. It comes with your charging handle because it's there and then everything just kind of integral into it and you can kind of go from there. It's, a, it's an awesome one. So use code BOP10, save yourself some money on this upper. So let's kind of just go tip to butt here. I did go with the Surefire Closed Time War Comp at the front, probably one of my favorites um, so far, uh, other than the uh, Dead Air 3 Prong. I absolutely love the Dead Air 3 Prong, but this is a 16 inch gun. I wanted to keep it real short, so we went with that. Um, I am running in Malkoff devices on a Surefire movable mount here. I don't have the 640 bodies. Um, and yeah, they're really cool. I absolutely like it, but the Malkoff E2 XT on this Surefire, very awesome with a light clicky tail cap. Slate Black Industries SVG, so this is the vertical grip that goes on here. Absolutely awesome, I love this. I love the Slate Black and the Unity. I've been finding that I've absolutely liked both of them so far, so I'm running the Unity on one of my other guns. I think it's on my on my 14.5 URGI. And then I'm running it on this. So uh, I'm running the Slate Black on this and another a couple of other guns. And I've been absolutely loving both of them. So if you're ever in the if you're ever interested, you want a vertical grip, the Unity and the Slate Black Industries, both extremely importable, and I highly recommend both of them. It's just a, if whatever one you want for your aesthetic. Uh, BCM QD little attachment here. This is anti-rotation, how LMT should have been from the beginning, but they weren't. And then as of right now, because I don't know my optic selection yet, um, I'm still thinking about a, quite a few things, but uh, we have the uh, my bastard child optic here, which is my Holosun uh, 403 GR, so the gold dot with the um, uh, rotary switch on it. So this has the rotary one. I've absolutely been loving that. I've actually had this optic for four years and I've only changed the battery once. Um, not a huge fan of Chinese products, but I will say this one was probably built pretty well. And the Scalarworks mount, which is the exact same price as the optic. So <laughs> there you go. Um, and then I went with it in OD green. So they did have this originally uh, in 10.5, which is what I was looking at. And then they went with the 16 inch. To be honest, the 16 inch is actually probably better for me. I like rifles more. Now I will say one of the only things I don't like about the BRN-180 is it doesn't come in a 14.5. I'm gonna go ahead and state that right now. It's BS that this doesn't come in 14.5. And the reason why I know that is PWS makes this upper receiver. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and state, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that this upper receiver does not come in a 14.5. Um, either 13.7, 13.9, or 14.5, I think are all valid upper receiver lengths. And technically you shouldn't even have to really pin weld them as long as you let people know, you know, hey, these are designed to work with certain muzzle devices, which Brownells also sells specific chemo style muzzle devices. So I am a little peeved that this upper only comes in a 16 inch and a 10 and a half inch. I mean, these should be available from 10 and a half, 11 and a half, 12, five, 13, seven, 13, nine, 14, five, 16 inch. You can do all of that. Uh, but these currently only come, these currently only come sadly in 18 and a half, 16 inches and 10 and a half. And 10 inches if you go 300 blackout, but I'm talking about the 556 five, variants specifically. Really my only bone to pick with this. Uh, I do feel a little bit of gas coming out the front when I do shoot this, so I don't know if there is a leak in the gas system or if that's just how the short stroke gas piston is designed, which I, I will say I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it is. I'm not a huge fan of short stroke or long stroke piston systems. I do realize they make it harder for guns to work, but this is also how this gun was designed. I actually love this firearm and it does not hit me real hard in the face it's suppressed when I do shoot this suppressed I've run it with a three baffle can on it um, from Rex Silentium my buddy Jacob has that can and he let me run that when I had the dead air muzzle device that I had on this and then I went to a surefire because I think that's the can I'm going to go with here in the future and well I like the war the war comp keeps that muzzle device or keeps that muzzle down and it's really nice plus I like the way it looks I like the close tying flash hider look you know that's just kind of how I like that but I haven't been able to shoot it suppressed yet with a surefire cam which I really do want to do here very soon getting into the accuracy of this gun let's go ahead and talk about that right now 
All right, so let's go ahead and just state this right off the bat. These were all shot indoors with a primary arms 4 to 16 power scope over at Texas Gun Club at their 50 yard indoor range. So there is no crosswinds or anything like that. This is just pure unbridled um, accuracy. So 50 yard accuracy test. These are all shot at 10 round groups also. So the first one up is Fioki Range Dynamics 55 grain stuff. It looks like this. So this exactly the box comes in, 50 round boxes. This is a very good load so far and has in fact been performing quite well in the BRN-180 along with other guns that I've had. I will state that the BRN-180 is a one in eight twist barrel. It does not cold hammer forge, it is phosphated and it, uh, yeah, that's all I know about it. So uh, going in, we are looking at right at center to center two and a quarter inches. So we have a two and a quarter inch group from center to center from farthest. And then our tightest group here being this right here, our tightest group being about an inch and a half. So two and a quarter inch, 10 round group. I don't think that's bad at all. I mean, especially just being right in there. It was a very good group. I'm very proud of this. And yeah, also shot with a LaRue MBT two stage flat face trigger. All right, going in with the M193. So this is, uh, it's a company. It is not the Lake City M193 that I have. This is some sort of, um, I think it's like Indian. It's like Lahab. It's like Saudi Arabian or something like that. Lahab Arms or something, but that's what it is. So our farthest group looks like an inch and three quarters. Yeah, it looks like we're at an inch, an inch and three quarters right here. So center to center, actually just under an inch and three quarters for the M193. I actually would say that's a very respectable group. Um, I was actually expecting that to be a lot bigger, but the 223 and the 556 rounds here, it looks like it prefers the heavy, the hotter stuff, the 556 out of a one and eight to a sparrow for 55 grain stuff. The next stuff that we shot though, was some Black Hills, all right? So the Black Hills ammunition is probably some of my favorite ammo. It shoots great in everything. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't know how great it performed here, but this is a 10 round group. Uh, we will go ahead and look right now, center to center. All right, it looks like we're sitting at, trying to get this right for here for you guys, just under two inches. So just under two inches. I'll let you call that what you want. Uh, about a, just, just under a two inch group, you know? All right, guys, so I think we had a few solid offerings from the Black Hills, the Fioki, and the Lahab 193, although we do have some Lake City 193 that I think we should definitely test out on this guy also. So I think that this is a pretty good 77 grain stuff, but I do want to test some lighter 55 grain stuff, uh, especially these hunting loads right here, because I think this is definitely one of the roles that this gun can play. It's definitely a varmint uh, style hunting thing, you know, definitely go from like uh, white tailed deer all the way down to groundhog and prairie dog and all that other fun stuff. So, uh, I think that this would definitely be one of those rifles that definitely handles a lot more, uh, than just, you know, being like a tactical rifle. Um, now I'm not going to go ahead and get into the history and all that other fun stuff of the BRN-180, but let's go ahead and talk about my dilemma for the optics that I have. So I like the uh, the always on optics for home defense because I just, I feel like they're much better. I've been looking at an EOTech EXPS3, probably one of the most interesting optics that I've been, uh, the, the EOTech EXPS2, I'm sorry, in the green reticle. Uh, it's probably one of the cooler ones I've been thinking about. Now I do live in a very foliage rich area. I do live in Houston, so green is, is all around. Um, there are no mountains. It's literally just hot, humid, and green all the time. <laughs> There's not very many times a year where we don't get a lot of rain. So the green dot, um, people do say that it washes out. I haven't had that issue with the hollow sun green dots that I've had in the past or the hollow sun green dot that I carry on my pistol. Have not had that issue. Now, granted, normally when I'm carrying my pistol, it is in the city, not out in the, uh, with my green dot anyway, not out in the bush because I usually carry my 17 or anything like that. So going into it. Uh, the Aimpoint Duty RDS is probably my big contender for what I want to put on here. I specifically love the Aimpoint Duty RDS, but they are very hard to find right now. Apparently, they're all going to the good old war in Ukraine that nobody cares about anymore, specifically me. Um, but yes, going into it, the BRN-180 
and uh, always on optics. I think this would be a good home defense rifle, a good predator hunting rifle, good hunting rifle, just anything like that. You could literally go from white-tailed deer all the way down to a small game and include self-defense in this upper receiver. I think that it's, it's just that well-rounded. Um, we will definitely do some more accuracy testing in the future with those lighter loads because I definitely think that the 55 grain stuff proved itself pretty well, but we could definitely get into some better, uh, more well-rounded optics uh, that go with that and then we can always also go into the ammunition to kind of feed that now i don't want to go with an lpvo not a big fan of them i do think that uh if you if you need distance the good old g45 will do which i do plan on picking up here pretty soon the uh, eotech g45 is a 5x now I know a lot of people are going to state that they they have specific specificities for like hollow sun and uh, specificities good lord for hollow sun or whatever i like my hollow sun my hollow sun has been on this gun for about four years now it uh, pro, most likely five now uh, it's got it's pretty much my bastard child of an optic it kind of goes on everything i really like it 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 just works i've only ever replaced the battery in it once and it just keeps ticking it's probably one of my favorite optics that i have that didn't cost a ton of money the only downside is I just I, I I don't trust it because I have this I have this sneaking suspicion that this optic is literally just going to just kaput one day like right when I need it <laughs> and I know I know that can really happen with anything but I just feel like the chances are higher with it being a hollow sun I, I don't know maybe I'm crazy but I know people are going to be like uh, they're diehard hollow suns and including one of my one of my best friends Mike he's a diehard hollow sun fan but you know nothing beats that that reliability of aim point. Nothing beats that reliability of the EOTEX or a lot of the other higher end stuff on the market. Uh, the Vortex stuff is actually pretty good. I like the UH-1 Gen 2. I've been thinking about that. I've also been thinking about the, the EXPS-2 and the green reticle just because, you know, it's, it's, it, it is one of my favorite optics. I like the Donut of Death. I like all that. Really, the only downside is the horrific battery life that those optics get. Um, and not, not that I can say anything negative because the EXPS3 that I have is still going strong on the battery that I got when I got it. Now granted, I've only had that optic for a couple months, but I think it's been pretty good and I do like the EOTech. But I don't know of any other optics that are out there. And if anybody wants to talk about optics or wants me to put an optic on here, I mean, I'm all ears. I'm all ears about looking at different optics. Um, I like the option for a T2. I like the option for an H2. Um, I like the op the option for another Comp M5 or a Comp M4. I think a Comp M4 would probably be a little huge on this thing, but it would probably be really cool. You know, just different things, different things I want to try with this. And I think that it would be pretty awesome to have. So. Definitely let me know in the comments down below what you guys think would be a pretty awesome optic for this that's not insanely heavy. Like, I, I, I like the Comp M4, but at the same time, I feel like the Comp M4 would just be too damn heavy for this. So, you guys let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, I haven't had any issues really with the BRM-180. I haven't noticed any problems with it, you know, doing anything like short stroking or anything like that, especially when it comes to the gas system. Now, I did run this suppressed a little bit. You can probably see in the videos in the backgrounds. Uh, shooting suppressed was pretty nice. The only problem I will say I have had with this issue, this upper consistently, is it does hit me right in the arm with brass. So if I'm not wearing a long sleeve shirt, it will smack right in my arm with brass. And after a while, you know, especially when you shoot fast strings of fire or long strings of fire, you really just get annoyed to get a hit in the arm with brass. So what I ended up tending to do now is I usually just go to the range with a long sleeve shirt on because I'm tired of having to deal with the days of people asking me what the hell happened to my arm at work <laughs> because I literally look like I've been beat up uh, by a bobcat or someone trying to attack me with a curling iron. So other than that, with this upper receiver, it's been phenomenal. It has not had any hiccups. I have not cleaned it very much. I did clean it just before I went out and took it um, for accuracy testing. Usually before I take stuff out to go do an actually testing session, uh, specifically because I only have one long range scope, uh, being the 4 to 16 primary arms, that's usually kind of how I end up doing those sorts of things. So if you guys have any other questions down below about how I do things, or even if you just want to ask questions about the optics that I'm thinking about for this, or if you want to add your own, please let me know. I would be more than willing to look at different suggestions. I'm not saying I'll do it. I'm not saying I'll do it, but I am more than willing to look at them. But yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the bench. As always, I can't say what I used to say. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and giving me feedback down below. As always, be a hoodlum.